Hi everyone and welcome to Isamu Rat Care. So today is week two of breeding so I'm going to look at week two of having a litter and um, conveniently enough I have some little two week old babies here to join me. Um, what I'm going to do is similar to the last week and I'm going to talk about um, kind of habitat environment and what might have changed what might not or talk about feeding um, socialization and then any kind of issues that might pop up. Um, so first of all habitat what changes this week. So the, the only major thing that I do, and that's towards the end of the week, I will um, clean the rats out. And I'll, I'll kind of judge this based on who's smelly and who's not. Um, and in this case, Mog got smelly around about, I'd say about oh, the Saturday, um, which was the day I was going to a show. So then I cleaned around the Sunday, so it wasn't a big deal. Um, the babies didn't really mind. So. Cleaning out is something that you need to be a little bit careful with, I would say. Um, each dough will react to it differently. So the um, mug is very relaxed though, so I knew I was not going to have any issues. In fact, um, what I'll do is at the end of this video, I'll just a kind of quick video of her um, kind of exploring her cage afterwards and you'll see how kind of unbothered she is. Um, but some doughs can get quite stressed and kind of leap around and carry little babies around. Um, and scatter them a bit so there are a few tricks to it the main trick that i do is when cleaning them out i will save a little bit of the their nest so um i'll kind of grab the babies and um a handful of the nest and put them in something like this so this is a little cold cozy cuddle cup really useful if you're a breeder because you can just put the babies in it keeps them pretty warm um and contained to a point sorry i've got babies going around my neck at the moment <laughs> um, they quite like burrowing in my, my neckline yeah, so um, I put the babies in there with a fair handful, well in fact this was basically full of nesting materials and babies whilst I cleaned out the cage. So then I took out all the substrate and replaced it with new substrate. I've actually gone for a mix this time, now the babies are a bit older, they've got a mixture of some shavings and um, some chopped cardigan. And they've either got a litter tray, um, that's more for mum than for them, but over the next week-ish they're going to explore more and more of the cage. And actually it'll be quite nice for them to... Um, experience um, different textures and things for digging so I'll pop a picture of that to make sure you can see it um, and then I put roughly where mum had had her previous nest hollow in the ground then added all the nesting material and the babies into that and then um, I sometimes if, I'm, if I think mum might be a little bit stressed and want to distract her I'll sprinkle a bit of food around I didn't in Mog's case though she insisted on searching for the food just on the off chance that, um, that I did it um, but you don't kind of have to do that necessarily, it can help, it might not. Then I add the mum back in, shut the cage and leave her to it. If your mum does start freaking out and bouncing around, um, your best bet, unless she's actively kind of hurting the kittens, is to leave her to it. She, generally, she just needs to get that little bit of stress out of her system and then she'll realise, settle down, gather up the ki kittens if she scattered them and kind of start nursing. And, and fairly soon she will kind of feel a lot more at home. Um, you can help matters by adding more of her subs the original substrate um, but that's really down to how how mucky and dirty it is but also how you feel and how you feel she will react um, those like Mog who have shown absolutely zero um, inclination of being stressed about basically anything that's happened so far um, I wouldn't worry too much but other does you might consider um, doing a little bit more just to kind of protect them and keep them non-stressed so aside from that, in the in the second week, I haven't done anything different to their environment. So the cage is still very much the same setup that you saw me set up in my um, setting up a birthing cage video. Um, the kind of big changes happen in this next coming week, which uh, I'm quite excited about. It's my favourite bit where I start getting to set the cages up for them. Um, so that's the environment side of thing. Feeding wise, um, the requirements for mum have increased a bit. Um, they're still small little babies, but actually they're wanting quite a lot of milk. So it's worth making sure that you are offering your mum a little bit of extra food by volume and um, if it's a biggish litter, regular wet meals go down well. Make sure you keep supplements up. Um, it's quite important that mum has lots and lots of supplements at this stage. Sorry, you can't see this. The babies are starting to nibble now, so they're kind of sucking my fingers and chewing them slightly. Bless you little ones. Um, so that's the main thing from the feeding point of view. Otherwise, it's very similar to last week. Uh, the babies will not really have figured out what food is yet. Once their eyes open, and we'll get onto that when we think about the baby's development, then 
they'll start to be slightly more interested but you're looking at more in between kind of the third week when they start really getting into uh, eating things and testing things and you have to think about their needs as well which these little ones are just about starting to hence why they're chewing my fingers so social development wise what do you see happen so you start the start of the week with babies that are covered with fuzz usually and um, they might be very short fuzz or it might be fairly well developed fur um, but there isn't much to it their ears are sealed and their eyes are sealed so whilst their ears have unfolded and you can tell what's done by on top here their ears themselves will still be sealed against the sound um, around about it's normally about day 10 to 14 ish you will notice that the ears open up um, and they start turning into proper rat ears so you can see the ear canal and you can see into that kind of dark little hole rather than it being sealed and their eyes will also open and that's quite special you'll start off with a tiny little crack and then slowly it'll develop until the whole whole um kind of eyes are little beady and open every now and again you might get a baby that's eyes open freakishly early i had a, g a girl once that opened on day nine one of her eyes and then the, the her other eye and the rest of the litters didn't open until day 11 ish and sometimes it takes a little bit longer so it could could go into that third week I am getting properly licked here. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but this little chap is licking my fingers. It's all very, very cute. I have a feeling that might be Beefcake, who's my um, biggest boy. Anyway, um, I shall stop getting distracted by the highly cute kittens. So, the, in, the ears are open, the eyes are open. What you will also notice, and actually I noticed this perhaps a day or two before the ears and eyes open, they'll start kind of sniffing around a little bit but more being very aware of their surroundings and they'll start sniffing you too it's like a, a kind of switch switches on and suddenly they realize the world exists it, they're more than driven um, by kind of warmth and food which is all that really kind of motivates them when they're very young and they suddenly start realizing there's stuff there's people there's things that smell different it's not just mum and everything else um so that's that's always a sign to me that within the next few days they're going to start um Kind of opening their eyes and learning to interact with the world you'll also notice that some of them start grooming themselves around then which is infinitely cute um there's there's few things that can be cuter than um little babies grooming and their fur will come through fully so you can see here that um, this wasn't this girl here has quite developed fur now it's kind of proper little coat and that means that they can stay out for longer Gun, what are you up to yeah, so they can stay out for longer, which is why they're keeping me company for this video. And that lends itself nicely to the social aspect. So this week starts becoming more important that you get time in with the babies. Um, the time you put in will help them kind of be very used to humans, be used to different smells, different textures, um, letting them investigate you and various locations on you. Like, down here, yes, we have a little topaz boat there. Um, they'll also get a lot more active. You can see that these are kind of climbing around a bit more now. Um, in the next few days, they're going to be able to climb possibly even cage bars if they could reach them, but they can climb basically. They can get around the nest now, as you can see from this little chat wandering, um, exploring, that they're uh, very capable and kind of inquisitive, but they still like the safety and they don't have a lot of energy. So any time spent out, they will quickly kind of collapse. So most of the time spent in the second week in terms of socialising is just getting them out and holding them. And that's really just familiarising them with kind of the human smell and I'll give them a bit of a stroke and similar. Um, while mum is in the cage, which she's over there at the moment with her cage mates having fun. Actually, she's been straight to the digging box and had a dig because she loves digging. Um, she's running the wheel a little bit and is now looking for food downstairs just in case anybody's missed anything. She's also slightly fat at this stage, but that kind of like happens. Um, I should say as well that it's around about this age, once their eyes are open, that I will comfortably handle the babies in front of mum. As it is with Mog, um, I went a little bit earlier because um, she's just so relaxed. Um, she came over to me with a baby attached to her at one point, so I picked it up and put it back and Mog was not in the slightest bit bothered. So I can now stroke her in the nest and like today she wanted to come and see me and she was kind of covered with babies so I helped remove some of the babies so that she could break free she's kind of like stretching trying to get out of the cage whilst weighed down by a small skirt of babies oh, you're off again little mister and oh, he knows where he wants to go i shouldn't have taken him away from his nice warm spot um so 
we've got a very successful little litter. All the babies are still doing well. That's a quick update on, on Mug. Um, what we have done, I've still got some of the fosters here. So if you remember last week, I took on five fosters from Mug's sister's litter and Mug raised them very well. So they were gaining quite nicely through the week. Um, we kept an eye on it and they basically the littlest ones would gain every day. But they weren't gaining masses but they were gaining and actually over the course of the course of the week it started off very slowly for a solar but with that load taken off her slowly but surely her milk production improved which is quite an interesting one um, and she d found two more nipples um, and was able to feed even better so at, at one point the smallest in the solar litter started taking over the smallest in foster with it uh, with mog so we sent two of the fosters back so i still have a few of the fosters in fact i will just show you the difference in size so here's a little foster one of the bigger little fosters and here's one of mog's original babies you can still see there's a fair size difference um let's see if we can get them to actually stay they don't tend to stay so much at this point this is the point where i start soon switching to videos rather than taking photos of them sorry babies did i take you away from your nice warm hand yeah, so they're going very well. Um, the, the fosters here are doing really well and the ones that were sent back to Isola are also doing well. So it's kind of like a win-win really. We've, we've bought Isola a little bit of time and now we can kind of move them back. And both times it happened kind of very simply. Where are you up to, little miss? Yeah, there was no stress from either mum about having babies added or taken away. Um, so it's kind of, it's a really good system to be able to have as a backup. So what issues do you potentially need to look at in week two? Now week two is actually quite a good week. <laughs> Generally speaking, you, you've at low risk of anything in the terms of, in the first week, babies can just die unexpectedly for no particular reason. Um, in the second week, this tends to kind of not happen or it's a lot rarer. Um, it's a fairly stable week, I would say. You do need to keep an eye that everybody's gaining nicely um, and that there's not any kind of, oh, that's my chin. There's not any kind of babies significantly falling behind, but usually in the second week, they're still very reliant on mum's, mum's milk. So as long as mum's got a good milk supply, everything should be nice and simple. So there's not much to really worry about. I quite like week two and it also leads into probably my favourite week, which is week three. Um, I like it because it's when you really start seeing their little personalities come through. They suddenly um, suddenly turn from little cute fluffy things into proper little people. So um, I'm looking forward to doing the week three uh, video next week. So I should probably say bye from me and Asola and Mog's little girls and boys. Sorry, I've got one who's trying to dig into my hair at the moment. You can't really see it, but yes, they're definitely learning to climb. <laughs> um, yeah, so goodbye from me and the um, little babies. And I will see you in week three. So Mog has now been cleaned out and she has to decide what to make of this new smelling cage. Um, she's pretty unstressed at the moment, in fact if I don't shut this she'll just come out for a wonder. Go on Mog. Um, the babies are pretty oblivious in their nest because I've moved part of their nesting material over with them so that works really well. Um, I've now opened up this side so that used to have cardboard on it so it's a little bit more open in preparation for later this week when I'll remove the covering because mum won't really need it anymore. At the moment Mog being Mog she's looking for food. In fact if I put some food in there she'd become immensely distracted and um, not really care. There she's checked her baby still exist. Um, she's more interested in the cage. Now Mog is pretty calm about this. Um, what you can find the first time you clean out some mums is the mums will go and start pickling the babies and um, running around the cage looking for somewhere safe. Um, this can happen, to be honest, you're best just leaving them to it, they will calm down in the end. But that is why we move a good portion of the nest across when we do clean them out. Um, I think Mog's going to be very disappointed to find I haven't actually hidden any food around. But yeah, Mog's is very calm reaction, which I was expecting of her, to be honest. Um, so I will leave her to continue to explore her cage and at some point the babies may um, resort to seeking her out if she doesn't pay them some attention soon um, but she's having great fun tunneling through the new substrate um, so have fun little muggy